Hey there, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the gradebook export function together with Excel to keep up with student work that has not been turned in. Uh, we are in the middle of our hybrid learning with COVID right now. Um, and there are so many kids who have not been turning in their assignments as we come up to the end of the grading period. And I am worried about uh, getting kids remediated and taking care of their incompletes and assignments that haven't been turned in. I've had a hard time keeping up with things. Um, so I've come upon this and it has been really helpful to me. So here is an example of what we're going to do. I've got this spreadsheet for Excel spreadsheet for my second period class and I've used conditional formatting to you know, highlight the assignments that are zeroed or missing or incomplete and I've been able to just bring down the assignments that are worth a lot of points. So these are my summative category assignments. So essentially just the major grades. When I'm looking at things in Infinite Campus, I find it gets a little bit confusing and it's easier to see when I put it in this spreadsheet format. So I'm going to run through these steps real quick and hopefully you'll find it helpful. To start with, I'm going to go to the instruction menu where I have a list of all of the reports. If you're using the uh, classic look, it'll be in the reports section and I'm going to go to gradebook export. I'm going to pick my term at this point for me, it's the end of court. We're coming up on the end of quarter two and I'm going to pick my section. You can only do one section at a time and you cannot do section groups. So I've already done the second period. That's the example I showed you. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the third period. So here's where we go next. And one of the things I like better about this one versus using the Infinite Campus Gradebook is I can get quarter one and quarter two all together in one view. In the Infinite Campus Gradebook, you can only see one quarter at a time and flipping back and forth between those two quarters, particularly as we're doing remediation back to the beginning of the year right now, just given how much work was not turned in while we were in full virtual. It's nice to be able to have the full semester in one view. So. I'm going to deselect everything from quarter one and I'm going to select just the summative tab. Now I could pick individual assignments, but uh, my school system right now is using only the summative grades to count the average. So I don't need to look at all this other stuff. In this case, I'm only interested in uh, remediating and making up the major grades for my students at the moment. I'm going to come down to quarter two. I'm going to deselect everything and reselect just the summative category. All right, I'm going to go ahead and generate a CSV, which is a comma separated values uh, spreadsheet and is a type of Excel file. I'm going to give it a name. I've already uh, got my period two spreadsheet made up, so I'm going to use this as a template, but I like to have something that gives me the date so that as I'm pulling this spreadsheet over and over again uh, to keep it up to date, um, I know which is the most recent and I'm going to call this period three. I'm going to go ahead and save it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and open this file up. It'll launch Excel here. The first thing I need to do is convert this out of being a CSV file. The comma separated values file type um, does not hold formatting. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the file menu. I'm going to save as. And I am just going to change that to an Excel document. I'm going to save it. Uh, I'm going to go through a couple of steps that help me. Some of these steps are optional. So uh, you can do the ones you like and skip some of them if you don't like them. First thing is when Infinite Campus exports the spreadsheet, it includes their student number and that just causes my eyes to cross a little bit. So I want to get rid of that student number just to make it easier for me to look at. Look at. That's pretty easy to do. I'm going to right click here and insert a blank column, select this first column, go to my data menu and use the text to columns feature. I'm going to make this delimited. I'm going to go next and I'm going to select other and I'm going to put in the hashtag number symbol pound side next and finished and that is going to separate the student number from the name and then I'm going to delete this column because I don't need it. I'm going to resize this and to me that just makes everything a lot easier to look at. I am going to delete 
the task name and the initial value because it can mess up your sorting if you want to sort different ways because Excel does not like multiple header rows. All right, so at this point, I have the student's name, I have the name of the assignment, and I have their grades on the assignments. So next, I'm going to select my range. There's a couple ways you can do it. I'm going to go to cell A1. You can use Control, Shift, and End, and that will select a default data range. For some reason, it always gives me a few extra cells, so I want to use Shift-Click on the bottom corner of my range. Or you could just start at A1 and come down to the bottom corner and Shift-Click to start with to select your range. You could click and drag. There's all different kinds of ways you can do it. But uh, select your range. I like Control-Shift-End, and then it brings me down to the bottom corner. Shift-Click the bottom corner, and that's my favorite quick way to do it, but do what works for you. I'm going to go to the Home menu, select Conditional Formatting. Highlight Cells Rules. And there are a few different ways you can do this. I'm going to show you some options. Equal to 0, Light Fill with Dark Red Text, OK. And what this does is anything that has a 0, because mainly I'm interested in things that have not been turned in. Uh, gets highlighted red. It is easy to see at a glance. And you can see here that if, if I use zero, an empty cell uh, also gets treated to the red highlight. So this student, for instance, he actually just got added to my class today. So this student won't be getting a grade because he won't have been enrolled long enough. This student moved into the school, so has a couple of blank spots. Um, but it'll highlight uh, this one was also a late addition to the class, so but it'll highlight that for you. Now, there are some school systems, and it just depends on, in some schools, it depends on school to school, where instead of putting zeros, they are giving an I for incomplete. And you can use Infinite Campus to fill an I for incomplete. And let's just say, for example, your school is using the I's and you're not using the zeros. Uh, you can do the same thing. I can re-highlight my data range, go back to conditional formatting, highlight cell rules equal to, and I could give this an I as easy as I could give it anything else. And you could pick a different color. Say you have multiple codes you want to keep track of. I can give my I's for incomplete or an M for missing if that's what you're using. Um, or let's say you have a school where instead of zeros you are giving uh, 60s. Let's just for example here. Uh, your 60 would be what you put in place of a non-turned in assignment. You could do the same thing. So I'm just trying to show you here or you could use a less than. Let's say anything that's 70 and below you need to target students for makeup. So I can use this less than. I can do 70, and maybe let's say I want to give this green. Oh, you know what? I forgot to select my range. We're going to try that one more time. I have to select the range here. And so now I'm going to conditional formatting less than 70, green, and there you go. So that has overridden my zeros, but now I have anything that's a 60. Um, it looks like if I wanted to include the 70s, I would have to say 71, but this is going to highlight anything in my spreadsheet that is a failing grade. So I caught a 66 down here, and for me, this just helps. You know, get the whole thing in at a glance in a way that's uh, easier to deal with and having to switch back and forth between the quarters and uh, deal with the different ways that Infinite Campus does things. So anyway, that is a quick tip. Hope this is helpful for you. If you found this helpful, please like my video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.